I'm going to show you my top five all-time favourite Doctor Who Target book covers, and then hopefully you're going to tell me yours. Which of these amazing covers will make number one? Hello, you astonishing eclipse. If you're new here, then I'm Jason Arnop, the author of The Last Days of Jack Sparks, Ghoster, and some Doctor Who stuff. It's entirely possible that you might enjoy my book, Auto Rewind, which focuses on a disturbed Doctor Who fan. But back to those target books. You may have seen my previous video, in which I counted down from 10 to 6. If you haven't, then I'm going to put a card up there in that top right hand corner, so that you can click on that, maybe go through, watch the video, then come right back here for the rest. Because I am going to count down all the way from 5 to 1. Buckle up. Right, let's get back into that countdown. What will be number 5? Solid Gold Classic, right here. Chris Achilleos again, doing what Chris Achilleos does, which is deliver the goods. I met him once at a fighting fantasy event and he was a lovely guy. This uh, particular paperback I have here is quite grubby, but I must admit it's, it's really nice to have Target books in nice condition, but I'm not all that bothered. For some reason, when they're a little bit beaten up and they've been through the wars, it kind of adds to the charm of them. You know, it gives them a little history. So I don't mind that. Yeah, that's a lovely cover. Always love the Sea Devils. They look great. Great portrait of Pertwee there. Looking proper heroic. I reckon he would have loved that. And, you know, that's not a bad uh, Joe Grant picture there. That is Joe Grant, right? Yes. And a submarine. And I remember that beyond this great cover, there are some really iconic pictures in here. Or at least they're iconic to me. As I said, some of these covers were the first time I ever experienced these stories. And so things like that are just wonderful. Sea Devil taking a pot shot of the Doctor, narrowly missing. <laughs> the Doctor looking a bit like an old lady at a jumble sale in this particular picture, but it doesn't matter, it's fantastic. A startled, a startled old lady at a jumble sale. Right. There's one picture in particular that I really want to see. Oh yeah, the Master's Karate Skills, always a pleasure, a bit of action. I don't know, this probably doesn't look all that spectacular to you, and even to me it doesn't look incredibly spectacular now, but when I was a kid this absolutely caught my imagination. For one main reason, all these buttons and switches. When I was a kid I loved all this stuff. Most kids love buttons and switches, don't they? And this symbol really caught my imagination. I've got no idea whether that's in the actual serial at any point. I can't remember. It probably isn't. It's probably just the illustrator making up some alien looking stuff for, a, for a, a console. But I love that. And I can remember recreating that in some kind of, you know, I was drawing that symbol on a notepad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as you do. It's just all part of the magic of these books. Yeah, that's a doozy. Absolute doozy. Oh, the Ice Warriors. Beautiful. That is a classic image, whichever way you slice it. And, and I don't recommend you do slice it because this should be preserved exactly the way it is. Another Chris Achilleos work. And you can tell by this trademark, again, this kind of sparky, fizzy... Whatever that is. I don't even know what that is, but it's so cool. And artwork aside, this is just uh, derived from a absolutely classic image of Doctor Who with uh, the Ice Warrior towering over Victoria here. It's absolutely great. This, I mean, this, this list has been so hard to rank. I kind of regretted the decision to rank these titles because it's made it very difficult. I mean, this could have been number one, really. And... The next two could have been number one as well. So here's a dilemma. Can the Doctor overcome these warlike Martians and halt the relentless approach of the ice glaciers? Well, that is a question. That is quite a question. Sadly, this book doesn't have any illustrations in it, but it doesn't need to because that is just an absolute knockout punch right there. Oh, yeah. The 
tenth planet. Look at the majesty of that. Written by Jerry Davis, one of the great men who invented the, uh, the Cybermen, along with Kit Pedler, of course. And this cover I've always loved because it's so colourful. Look at the colours of that. If anyone's ever going to make me a surprise birthday cake, this would be great to have on it, just in case. Just so you know, just uh, FYI. This cover is so gorgeous, it's edible. And there's nice little touches here, such as it says the first Cybermen adventure, exclamation mark. Horror struck, the sergeant reached for his gun and a stream of bullets sprayed across the marching figures. But they continued marching. Excellent. It's just really special. It's really special. And especially when you look at this effect here, which is kind of the Chris Achilleos trademark. But yeah, it's another, another Achilleos cover. A killer Achilleos cover, if you will. Beautiful. So, what do we have here in the number two spot? Terror of the Autons. Ah, oh. great big eye, great big creepy crab claw, and this kind of interesting comic strip effect with a kind of cutaway pick here of the Master and the Doctor. Well, not, I'm not entirely sure of why they did that, but I like the effect, so I suppose that's all that matters. Yeah, that's just really cool. And there's bonus pictures on the back. This was a short-lived feature of uh, some of those early Target editions. Part crab, part spider, part octopus. Its single huge eye blazed with alien intelligence and deadly hatred. That's the worst kind of hatred, isn't it? I hate it when that happens. Deadly hatred. Oh, nasty. Oh my god. That used to be 40p. Unbelievable. Now, if I remember rightly, there are some fantastic illustrations in this thing. So let's take a look. It's got to be done, hasn't it? Okay, I say fantastic illustrations. Nothing wrong with the illustration, I hasten to add, but it's not one of the uh, most exciting or horrific moments from this really horrific Doctor Who serial. I mean, this, uh, yeah, Terror of the Autons is surely one of the most disturbing Doctor Who stories ever. Terror of the Autons established that Doctor Who trope of taking everyday items and making them absolutely deadly. Now, look at this. That, that image really arrested me as a child, as you can well imagine. The master standing by this tank of bubbling water with a, a thing inside it. And as the caption says, slowly a shape began to form. That really is horror. That's just pure horror, isn't it? That's classic hammer horror. Marvellous. I like the way that the master seems to be posing for this illustration as well. That's a, that's a nice touch. Ah, now here's a passage. I know this, uh, this video is supposed to be about the covers, but I can't let this go without drawing attention to this scene in which the, uh, the plastic chair devours this guy called McDermott. Rex looked on appalled as the heaving black shape in the corner swallowed McDermott completely. Ugh. A tide of cold, clammy black plastic rose over his head and swallowed him up, choking off his attempt to scream. The last thing McDermott heard was the master's mocking laughter. <laughs> Is this a Sean Hudson novel? It's really nasty stuff. This is also fantastic, isn't it? Look at the glee in that doll's eyes. That doll is loving grabbing this fella's neck. Ah, another classic image. I mean, that's unbelievable really, isn't it? The doctor reaches over and pulls off a policeman's face <laughs> in a moving car. <laughs> that is great. Pure horror. See, this is why I've never seen Doctor Who as a sci-fi show. I mean, I know it is, but primarily for me, it's a horror show. I don't tend to like a hell of a lot of sci-fi stuff, and yet Doctor Who is, you know, pretty much my favourite TV show ever, and yet it's sci-fi, but that's mainly because... I love it mainly because it's horror. It's all about death and people being possessed. Ah, yes, the Doctor being attacked by a phone cord, or a flex, as the caption says there, anymore. 
think that might be it. Oh no, look at that. Something between spider, crab and octopus indeed. Wouldn't want to meet that in a dark alley, would you? Hmm? What an awesome cover and what an awesome book. Finally, it's time to reveal my number one choice. Awesome cover alert. That is just all kinds of awesome. Look up the word awesome in the dictionary and you'll see this. I'm wondering if this, uh, this cover, this particular cover is a little faded actually. It's be, it would be worth me trying to track down a mint one so that these colors are really brighter, but it's not too bad. It's still pretty bright. Um, but I've seen it brighter online. It's hard to trust whether you're seeing an image's true colors online. In fact, it's hard to trust whether you're seeing anybody's true colors online. But let us worship this cover. I mean, the Omega mask is just brilliant. Love that thing so much. I've got no idea really why they changed it for Arcu Infinity. I'm assuming that was a rights issue of some description because why would you change that iconic mask? You're not going to top it. I mean, I don't mind the mask in Arc of Infinity, but this is a killer mask, quite literally. What else do I love about this? I love the fact that it's got all three Doctors on. Of course, you can tell from the artwork alone, this is another Chris Achilleos work. It's got all three Doctors, good portraits of each, and Omega seems to have mastery of all three of them. See, when I was a child, I saw what I now know are probably laser beams coming out of Omega's fingers into the Doctor's heads. Does he fire laser beams? It's been a while since I saw the actual serial. I'm looking forward to revisiting that in the Series 10 box set in July. And I thought, I saw these laser beams and I thought that they were actual literal talons, you know, claws going into the Doctor's heads, quite literally. And so that made it all the more powerful and just downright arresting and horrific. Love it so much. Yep, another great Achilleos work. Oh, and a bonus illustration on the back, and a killer at that. I love those gel guards, I don't care what anyone says. They rock. You might remember that in the first video, I mentioned how Target books were my first opportunity to see the imagery from the first three Doctor's eras. And I think maybe for that reason, this cover sums that up. Three great portraits of the Doctors, the image of Omega, and just the atmosphere of Target, which in no small part was provided in those early days by Chris Achilleos. This cover is absolutely magnificent and, in my eyes, a deserving number one. Of course, I'll probably change my mind next week, but let's not worry about that now. Here, then, is a reminder of my top ten choices. At number ten, it was The Curse of Peladon. At number nine, The Dalek Invasion of Earth. At number eight, Doctor Who and the Cybermen. At number seven, Doctor Who and the Daleks. At number six, Doctor Who and the Doomsday Weapon. At number five, Doctor Who and the Sea Devils. At number four, Doctor Who and the Ice Warriors. <laughs> You're seeing a pattern here at all in the titles. At number three, Doctor Who and the Tenth Planet. And as you just saw a few minutes ago, number two was the Terror of the Autons. And number one was the three Doctors. Yes! We did it! We got to the end, and you deserve a medal for getting this far and listening to me quacking on about all those Target novels. You've loved it, haven't you? But being a fellow Doctor Who fan, I know exactly how you're feeling right now. Oh yes, you're all full of disbelief and indignance, and you're aghast at how I could have got this top ten list so very badly wrong. Although, it's a personal favourites list, so it can't really be wrong. Just FYI. But that is exactly why I want you to get down there in comments and not only tell me your favourite Target memories from back in the day, if you have any, but also just your favourite Target books in whatever format you care to share. Top, top three, top five, just your favourite. I want to hear all about it. Tell me why you love that artwork too. If you'd like to read about the full history of Target books, then I can highly recommend this book from Telos Publishing, which goes through the whole thing in detail and not to mention gorgeous colour. I'll put a couple of US and UK buying links for it down below. And no, I didn't write this book myself. It's not all self-promotion around here, you know. Sometimes there's the odd Amazon affiliate link too. 
Thank you so much for watching. Check out my Doctor Who playlist. There's a link coming up right now. And also, embrace your obsession.